So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. I was worth saving. So you came and saved. And you sacrificed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was, to, thought die I was for. to die for. So you sacrificed so you your life. Sacrificed your so life. So I can be. So I can be free. So I can be so whole. I can be so I can tell so everyone. I can tell everyone. So you came and changed so my life. Changed my you life. thought I you was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. So you, me up inside. you thought I you was thought to I die, was die for. for. So you sacrificed so your, you life. your life. So I can be free. So I can be, so I can be whole. So I can, be so I can tell so everyone. I can tell I'll give you glory forever. so I can be so I can be free so I can be so I can be whole. I can tell so everyone I can tell everyone I know oh, So I can be, oh yeah, oh yeah, so I can tell everyone I know. Let that praise up say hallelujah, hallelujah, oh glory, glory, to the God who saved my life, and I will praise you forever. I'll magnify you. I'll give you glory. Forever. You deserve the glory. Forever. You deserve the praise. Forever, Forever. Forever. and ever. Forever. We love you, Jesus. Forever. We magnify Forever. you. Forever. Forever. So I can be. I can be whole. I can tell everyone. worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping hey so you cleaned me up inside you thought I was to die for so you sacrificed your life so I can be free so I can be whole I can tell everyone I know you thought I so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping so you cleaned me up inside yeah yeah you thought I was to die for so you sacrificed your life so I can be free I can be whole. I can, be whole. I can tell, so I can everyone. tell everyone. I know. Come on and give God some praise in this place.
Amen. Praise the Lord. I thought we was going to get some more of that. Amen. Let's give God the glory. Give God all the honor. And give God all the praise. I know that uh, tomorrow, Lord willing, is the holiday, but we can't forget the holy day. That we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Pray for the Parham family. Sister Parham has passed on and gone to be with the Lord. And remember all of the sick and shed in. Amen. Keep uh, that family in your prayer. Amen. The Finn family, keep uh, them uh, also in your prayers. God bless you. It's giving time. Come on, let's praise God for the opportunity, the privilege to be able to give just 10 cents. And he allow us to have the 90. Let's just pray that God help us to manage uh, the 90 that he allow us to have and that we will learn how to practice good stewardship because everything that we have belonged to the Lord. He is the proprietor. And I can praise God, and I said this quite religiously and repetitiously, that God has preserved us through the pandemic. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless your hearts. Thank you. It's giving time. Unseen, but present. Moving and felt. Like the seasons. Changing at exactly the right time. Like the pull of gravity that keeps me firmly planted to the ground beneath my feet. Your faithfulness. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Immovable, unshakable. Your love is steadfast and you keep every one of your promises. You will never leave and you never forsake the ones you love. You finish everything you start and never have you spoken a word in vain. As undeniable as the sun, rising day in and day out without fail, and just as certain as the setting of that same sun, you are faithful. You do not have to come to the altar, but you can come to the altar if you would like to come to the altar. I don't uh, believe that we should travel on the pilgrimage of life fullers without having Sister Vern altar time. Altar is a place where God hear and answer our prayers and if he don't answer immediately he will answer eventually. We have not because we ask not. It's a blessing to be able to come to the throne of grace boldly. I don't know about you. It's prayer time. Our state needs prayer. Our government needs prayer. Our school system needs prayer. Marriages needs prayer. Our families need prayer. Our home needs prayer. The city of Detroit needs prayer. Anytime you have a young man, 17 and 19 years old, going around threatening and murdering people for no reason at all, it's prayer time. God, our Father, we come. Thank you that we can come to the throne of grace boldly. We can come as your children. And first, we come to give you honor and glory for your goodness, your mercy, your amazing grace, your love that is from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you for your forgiveness. We dare not cover up. We come clean. We have sinned last week. We have failed you. We have missed the mark. We have made mistakes. But we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Even when the accuser of the brethren continued to go before the throne of God, we thank you, O oh God, that you have cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And O oh God, we come to thank you for the food we have to eat, for the clothes upon our back, we thank you for the roof over our head. We thank you for the money we have in our pocket. We thank you for transportation to get us from point A to point B. Thank you that no hurt, harm, or danger came upon us. No thief or robber came in to kill us. Thank you, O oh God, that we are alive. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for uh, keeping us in our right mind. Thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, nose to smell. Oh, God, thank you for giving us a mind to worship you in spirit and in truth. 
God, we pray for the sick and afflicted. We pray for those who are behind prison bars. We pray for those who are bound by alcohol, drugs, those who have a sexual addiction. We, we pray for those, oh God, who have backslid and lead them back and restore them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now because you are God and besides you there is no other. You make no mistake. You're too wise to make a mistake. You're too omnipresent to be lost. You're too omnipotent to be weak. And oh God, we come right now asking in the name of Jesus that I would break every chain, the chains of our past. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus that I would remember those, oh God, who are weak in the faith. I sense it around the altar that I would increase their faith. And oh God, remove all doubt. We pray in the name of Jesus because we know that your name has all power. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, every mountain that seem insurmountable shall be moved in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bind every demon. Now, Lord, we need your presence. We need your power. Now, Lord, help us to move from being weak to being strong. Help us to be able to cast off the works of darkness and to be able to walk in the light. Now, Lord, we thank you for open doors that's coming our way. We thank you for the breakthrough that's coming our way. Oh, we thank you for the deliverance that's coming in this building right now. Lord, we need you. We need you. We need you. We need what money can't buy. We need what schools can't teach us. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord, touch us right now from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Lord, 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 I'm not going to let you go until you bless somebody. Break every curse in the name of Jesus, any witch or warlock, any vexation remove it in the name of Jesus now Lord now Lord I don't know how you feel around this altar I need to be renewed open your mouth children we are in the heavenlies though we own John are open y'all too quiet in here open your mouth raise your hands those streaming live say Lord Open your mouth. Lord, revive us. Come on. Lord, renew us. Lord, restore us. We don't need just a drip drop. We need you to rain on us. In the name of Jesus, give him glory. Come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Open your mouth. Your flesh don't feel like it, but your spirit do. Praise him right now in spite of the problem. Come on, open your mouth. He inhabits. I'm not going to preach yet. Not going to let the choir sing yet. To you open your mouth. He inhabits the praises of his people. Praise him in the living room. Praise him in the kitchen. Uh, praise him in the bedroom uh, uh, walk around the house right now invite the Lord in invoke his presence uh, in the name of Jesus uh, I can't hear you I'm finna shut up now open your mouth come on say hallelujah hallelujah come on talk to 
glory, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We got access. He's the mediator. Come on. Come on, those streaming live. Come on, come on. You want to be blessed? Come on. You need the Lord to do something for you right now. Come on. You've been coming in here dry and DOA like you dead on arrival. Open your mouth. He's alive. That's it. Come on. Come on, don't you let the devil steal your praise. Come on. Don't you let the devil steal your joy. Come on. He's getting ready to get better. Come on. Healing is coming. Come on. Hey, thank you. We touch in heaven. In Jesus' name. Go back to your seats. In faith. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I got a feeling everything going to be all right. In the name of Jesus. This too will pass. In the name of Jesus. Come on, choir. Hallelujah. Can we just give God praise all over this room? Thank you, Jesus. God is worthy to be praised. I feel your spirit all over me. I feel it moving down in my soul. Come on, can you clap your hands for a few seconds? We're not going to be alone this morning. Come on, clap your hands. Come on.
Hallelujah. I feel it moving down in my soul. I was sitting back there and and this praise came over me. Don't kill me, Paul and Chris. But I was sitting back there and an old song came to me. And we used to sing it when we used to come on the air on the 1400 AM dial. We used to say, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. That's what we come to do this morning. Praise him. Oh, Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Can you help me say it? Oh, praise him. Praise him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Come on, say it. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus, blessed Savior, blessed Savior, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. One more time, praise him, praise him. Come on, do you come to do that this morning? Praise him, oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. Blessed Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Glory. name Jesus Jesus my God Jesus 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 oh Jesus 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 blessed save blessed Savior he's worthy Give God the praise. Oh God, I thank you. God is worthy oh yes, he is. to be praised. And for that reason, oh he's God. all you need. Can you just look at a neighbor and just tell him, say, neighbor, God is all you need. Come on, tell him one more time. We're going to sit down. But tell him, God is all your need. God is all you need. You're all I need. You're all I need. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands. Little praise and worship song. Hallelujah. Say, you're all I need. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, right here. You're all I need. You're all I need. Every breath you breathe through me. You're all.
You're all 
Hallelujah. We need the Lord. You keep living in this life, you will find out sooner or later that I need the old Lord. He's never absent. He's always present. You can tell him your secrets and he won't tell anybody else. He do understand. He do comprehend what we are going through. How many know, brothers and sisters, that he has the power to bring peace in your life and give you joy that's unspeakable. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, choir. There's a word from the Lord. I'd like to invite your attention to the Old Testament collection of writings. God bless you, those who are streaming live. Our friend, our friends, our brothers and sisters, we welcome you. We love you with the love of God at the Wings of Love Ministries, those streaming live. In the Old Testament, 1 Kings, chapter 19. Verse 4, I do believe that this is timely, this message. It's relevant for today. This did not come uh, from sermon.com. This came fresh from the oven of heaven. First Kings, chapter 19, verse 4. In the Old Testament, First Kings, chapter 19, verse 4. Thank you, musicians, ushers, quality control, engineers, members, friends, ladies and gentlemen, even enemies. <laughs> Verse 4 reads thusly, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, that means a broom tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Pay close attention. That he might die. Yes, Tiffany. And said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my fathers. Want to place our sermonic spotlight on this portion of this potent, powerful passage that we can ponder to put into practice after we leave the pews to go to the pavement. Listen. It reads thusly that he might die and said it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. I want to tag the text and talk about how to keep living when you feel like you want to die. Repeat after me. How to keep living when you feel like you want to die. To be or not to be is the opening phrase of the soliloquy, meaning one talking to himself. It is a monologue, not a dialogue. It means a speech given by Prince Hamlet in the so-called nunnery scene, meaning building for nuns of William Shakespeare's play Hamlet. Act three, yes, Lady J, scene one in the speech, Hamlet contemplates death, and nobody in here, from the pulpit to the back door, the pastors and the parishioners, yes, even pastors that teach the word, contemplate dying. Matter of fact, there have been several pastors during the pandemic who could not take the pressure, have taken Sister Whitfield their own life. Hamlet contemplates death and suicide. And don't judge, don't point the finger, because even as a saint, not just a sinner, saints also, at one point in their life, when you were overwhelmed with problems, didn't know how you was going to make it, didn't know how you was going to get out, you thought about suicide. Bemoting, yes, Lady J, overwhelming. And grieving over the pain, life can be painful. Heartbreak. Boyfriend you thought was going to be with you. Girlfriend you thought was going to be with you. Honey you thought was going to be with you. Homie you thought that was going to be with you. Broke. 
I'm trying, Sister Johnson, broke your heart. Heartbreak, Sister Webster, yes. Brother Hair, Sister Hair, not only heartbreak, but also divorce. And also when you lose a loved one, you feel like you can't make it, especially the widows, brothers and sisters who depended on the husband. And yet he's gone. And maybe the husband, the widower, who, who looked to the wife for a little earthly strength is gone. You ain't got to say man, just listen. He bemoaned over, he bewailing over, grieving over the pain, Brother Scott, and the unfairness of life, Brother Jones. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, life, Minister Dotson, can seem to be unfair. Could somebody tell him, I'm glad I came to church. Bless the, you were streaming live. Listen. Whenever you look at one who decides through stupidity and foolishness to get in a car inebriated and drunk, and they drive and they come out when the accident occurred without a scratch, and yet the innocent die, it seemed unfair. It seem unfair, Brother Hornbuckle, when you've been working on the job for a long time and people who just got hired, they come in. Not only do they get the job, they get the promotion. And yet you've been working on that job for a long time and they overlooked you. It seem unfair. It seems so unfair, brothers and sisters, that those who can have children, Brother Hank, and yet when they have the children, they kill that child, abort that child, or abuse that child. And those who want to have children can't seem, Sister Love, so unfair. Seems so unfair. A promising young man, ladies and gentlemen, who was going to be a football star. Here it is, brothers and sisters, a, a person that's on drugs, and that's cruel and rude, and yet he kills that person. Take him to court, and he get off scot-free. Seems so unfair. Though life seems unfair, I come to tell you on this first Sunday, we serve a just God. And God is not mocked what, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Listen, my brothers and sisters, to be or not to be, that is the question to live or not to live. That is the question. Do you have the courage to be? Just listen. Sometimes you and I forget that it takes more courage to live than to die. Dr. Bernard said suffering isn't ennobling, recovery is. Amy Hempel said, I am really interested in resilience, Alvin. The ability to come back even stronger after a setback. Resilience is the capacity for recovery. It's, it's your capacity to retain a positive self-image, a positive view of the world, even after you've been tested by difficult or traumatic circumstances. Listen. Think of it like the elasticity of a new rubber band. When the band is stretched, Chanel, what's wrong with you, girl? Okay, listen. Stretch very tightly. It springs right back into its former shape. Brothers and sisters, you wonder what you're going through right now? God is stretching you.
And you need to look at the person adjacent to you and tell them God has already put within your psyche a snapback quality. Why can't more people, especially the young, take the attitudes of Hemphill and Bernard and stand up to life? You can be resilient. Look at the person adjacent to you and tell them you can. Be resilient. Keep looking at them and tell them you can recover from illness, from change, from misfortune. I see you, I hear you saying, Pastor, my mother died, my, my father died, my, uh -huh, my child died, or some other relative or friend. But let me tell you that that doesn't mean that you're going to die. Of the same illness. Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. Someone said, if you're going to fix it, you must face it. If you're going to defeat it, you must deal with it. If you're going to conquer it, you must confront it. I'm going to preach today. Yes, trials can make us sick at the stomach. And tribulation can seemingly suck the breath out of us. Unexpected sorrows can knock us down. But should we consider suicide? Let me give you an emphatic no. Why, Pastor Jay, those streaming live? Why? Because where there is a will. There he is. Oh, I feel this away. I need you to look at somebody, tell them when life gives you a lemon, you better learn how to make lemonade. <laughs> Keep looking at them and tell them what it seemed like. You're sliding down a rope. You better tie a knot in and learn how to pull yourself back up. Look, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand. Watch this. Dr. Blackburn said some commit suicide for at least 10 reasons. Listen, they are to escape from an intolerable situation, to gain attention, to join a deceased person for whom one grieves. You know, I look at a lot of people. I've done funerals, and they want to climb in the casket. One time, I just, I just should have told somebody, shut them up in there, but I didn't. Listen. <laughs> listen, listen. We, we, we talk about the aches and pains. We talk about how bad times are. But I need you to look at somebody and tell them, you ain't ready to die. Well, if you're so ready to die, why you keep taking your vitamins? If you're so ready to die, why you keep going to the doctor? Come on, talk to me. If you're so ready to die, why are you eating right and doing your exercise? Look at somebody and tell them you're not really ready to die because God has no problems. He only has solutions. Ooh, I got to preach in here. Some brothers and sisters commit suicide to seek release from the shame and pain of a uh, dreaded disease. To seek fame or martyrdom in death. You know how they would strap up a, a bomb to themselves. Some of them Arabs. And not only would they blow up the surrounding, they would blow up themselves. Listen, brothers and sisters, some commit suicide to react to the heartbreak that comes in romance, marriage, or divorce. And some commit suicide to seek release from an embarrassing personal failure. I'm coming, I'm coming. Suicide is becoming the solution to more people's problems, especially the young, 16 to 25. And the old, over 65. Can I preach? Are these reasons good enough for taking your life? Watch this. Job cursed his days, but he didn't commit suicide. 
Wait, y'all can get in this mess. Y'all can get in this mess. Now, this is this, this a dialogue. I, I need you to look at somebody and tell them you better learn how to be a Job and not a Judas. Judas hung himself. Watch this. Job, Job, Job didn't commit suicide. Talk to Jackson, Job. What did you say? Listen, Jackson, this is what I said. Though he slayed me. Yet, whew, I feel this. Yet will I trust him, even though I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though I don't know how things going to turn out. I will trust them tears in my eyes, no money in my pocket, no job. Yet, y'all got to help me preach. I'm in debt yet. Will I trust him? He said, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Job, that wasn't enough. Since they are at church and those streaming live, I need you to talk to Jackson. Okay, Jackson, here it is. All of my appointed time. Will I wait? Till my change come. That's why you can't kill yourself. I need you to look at somebody. Tell them, tell them a change. It's going to come. What's that singer named Jones? That's, that, that sing about a change is going to come. Sam Cook. I need you to look at somebody. Tell them if Sam can sing it. I can live it. <laughs> Listen, that wasn't enough. That, that wasn't enough, Job. See how quiet they are? What else? What else, Job? Okay, Jackson, I got one more. And you finish preaching. But he knoweth the way that I take. Woo! <laughs> Wait, watch this. He said... Mm, when he is finished with me, when he's through with me, when he's completed what he started in me, boy, I'm feeling this. He said, I shall come forth, not bronze, not silver, <laughs> but he said, pure gold. Let me tell you, I've been through some things in my life, but let me tell you, I, 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 need, I need somebody to help me out now, brothers and sisters. I, I said I've been through some things. Don't look at me all cross-eyed. Cross -eyed. You've been through some things. But I don't know about you. I'm living my life like it's gold and living my life like. I need you to look at somebody and tell them I'm living my life. Like it's golden. Come on, Sister Johnson. I love you. A young lady in our church. Pressure. Pressure not here. Pressure here. Pressure not here. Pressure. I saw it on Facebook. And it really arrested my attention. Pressure was, was kicking the water. She was just kicking the water. Boom. It arrested my attention. I said, wow. Listen to what she said. She said, I choose to live life. Mm. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Life is a goal. You ought to reach it. <laughs> life is a struggle. You better learn how to fight it. <laughs> life is a game. You better learn how to play it. Y'all got to talk to me. Wait, let me hurry. Let me hurry. I'm, I'm too long. I'm too long. Woo, Dave, I feel like you. You know, when getting the feet, I can't shout like you, but I, I feel it. Watch this. Watch this. Do the rhyme to me. I, I put, put it on the screen, uh, Malachi. He can't do it. You didn't get it. <laughs> I'll say he didn't get You know, you got to give out the scriptures early. All right, I'm going to quote it, Al. Thank you. Do the rhyme to me. 3019, you need to put this down. Says, I, talking about God, has set before you life and death. You free more age, you can pick and choose. Watch this. Blessing and cursing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you down here before Jesus get back. I'm, I'm going after everything that's a blessing and leaving that which is a cursing alone. 
I don't care if it's a bad relationship. Come on, women, you better clap your hands. Huh? I, he he can be a curse. Don't mean he'll bless. <laughs> she can be a curse. Don't mean she'll bless. Wait, he, he said, I, I I said this before. Your life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Watch this. That thou, meaning you, and your seed shall live. Wait, I'm trying to lose weight. My pants falling. Watch this. Listen. Listen, Wayne. This, this is where I'm at home. Watch this. Watch this, Scott. You've been knowing me about 40-some years. Watch this. And Scott been knowing me for a long time. Can you imagine what that would do to my friend and my brother if I, if I would take my own life? He'd been sitting up here looking at me preach the word. He saw God change my life. Dude, see, let me tell you, that's selfish when you commit suicide. You don't know who, who looking to you. Who, you, you. You don't know who trying to be. Come on, talk to me. Trying to be like you. You, 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 you don't know who was depending on you. You, you. It's not fair for you to take your life and your children need daddy at home, need mama at home. I, I, I can't do it because I want my seed. If I take my life right now, good God. Says John, you said seven. I know you don't want to take your life. Right, listen, watch this. Look at somebody, tell them I can't do it because of my seed. I, I want my seed to be blessed. I, I want my seed to live. All right, in First Kings chapter 19, verse 4, I got four points and then I got to bounce. First Kings chapter 19 in the OT. Elijah thought about dying. It says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Which that is the wrong thing to do anyway. You went in the wilderness when you should have been on the mountain. Wait a minute. Watch this, watch this. He, he went in the wilderness and he came and sat down on the juniper tree, a broom tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. I've had it. Anybody in here have said to yourself, yes, sir. I've had it. Yes, Watch this. Don't miss this. Have you ever felt so down that all you could do was lie down? Yes. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father. Watch this. You, you, you know you have to dissect that text. You know you, you have to ask the, ask the text a question now. Watch this. Suicide is on his mind. Now let me, it's how sad, but see how confused Elijah is. He flees death, yet he seeks it. Come on, Scott. You could have died over there <laughs> after you had come down from the mountain, but you come all the way to the wilderness to die? Wait, don't point the finger at him. Eventually, Elijah learned the strategy which suggests a plan of action designed to achieve a major or overall aim on how to keep living when you feel like you want to die. Look at somebody tell them, you must do the same. Watch this. Wake up. Don't go to sleep. I worked hard on this. Listen. Look at somebody. Tell them, you help me preach. Get rid. Repeat after me. Get rid of your membership card of the Pull Me Club. Wait, don't clap. I ain't finished yet. Listen. Repeat after me. Get up out of the seat of self-pity and feeling sorry for yourself. Hey, hey, hey. How to keep living when you feel like you want to die. First of all, stream it live, put this down. First of all, 
know that there will be moments of delectation. Delectation. Say delectation. Delectation. I'm going to give you the meaning. It suggests enjoyment. Listen, God give us all these things to enjoy. Ain't nothing wrong to clap your hands. You got a car to drive. You got a little house. Ain't nothing wrong. Got, you got a little money. Got a little, you got a little cheddar. Ain't nothing wrong. Got nice little clothes on, shoes. You know, you, nothing wrong. God give us all these things to enjoy. Not only do delectation mean enjoyment, it means delight. Don't miss this. You wonder why so many people decide death is because they're delighting in the wrong things. Stop putting your delight and enjoyment in possessions and people and positions because people will let you. The Bible says, I just wanted to wake you up. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he'll give you the desire. Oh, I'm feeling this. The desires. Woo, that's it, Sister Love. Wave this thing. Come on. Y'all need to start clapping your hands right now. God getting ready to give you the desires of your heart because you delight yourself in him. St. Augustine said that our purpose here is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Listen, brothers and sisters, 1 Kings 18, verses 36 to, to verse 40, Elijah enjoyed the victory that was won on Mount Carmel. I don't have a lot of time to go into that. You can read it in the 18th chapter, how the prophets of Baal, screaming, moaning, chanting, calling for their God, and Elijah standing over there, <laughs> laughing, mocking them. He said, maybe your God is on vacation. Maybe he's asleep and don't want to be <laughs> awake. You know what happened, brothers and sisters? How they, had they made the trenches? They began to cut themselves. And their gods didn't say a word. Oh, look at the showdown. Elijah got on his knees and prayed. And all of a sudden, God sent fire. Down from heaven. Dried up the water. Killed the prophets. Oh, can you imagine the delectation, the enjoyment, the delight? Listen, brothers and sisters, let me pause to tell you. There will be times, trying Mother Taylor. There will be days when you feel like you're on top of the world. Rather than the world being on top of you. Life is good. What you say? Sister Cass said, oh my Lord. Life is good. You be saying, oh my Lord. Wait, you got a place to stay, car to drive, job to go to, money in your pocket, health and strength, family okay. But then, here comes trouble. Difficulty and crisis. Can I preach? The Bible says in Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Listen, brothers and sisters. Life teaches us that although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcome. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, Jones, you listen to me streaming live. I need you to say that I am a champion. I will not cave in. I need you to say, I need you to say I am an overcomer. Okay, then I'll leave them alone. I need you to say I am a champion. Open your mouth, close your eyes, say I'm a champion. I will not cave in. I am an overcomer. And whatever I'm going through right now will not overcome me. Whew. Watch this, watch this. 
Look at somebody tell me I was going to stay home and get ready to start cooking. Watch this. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Uh, Chicago preachers, let me tell you, he's, he's a great teacher in Chicago. Dr. Moody, Dr. Moody said, let us be as watchful after the victory as before the battle. See, we, te- we, we tend to let our guards down. You know, we, we're having a good time. Life is good. We're just enjoying ourselves. Oh, we just tend to let our guards down, and that's when the devil attack. Can I preach? Come on, Pam. Listen. Listen, brother and sister, I need you to look at the person that's dating you, especially in 2022 before Jesus get back, especially in this time. It's time for you to be watchful, to be vigilant, because the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let me give you a, fo- a footnote, and, and you don't have to pay for this. Not only is the devil like a roaring lion, he is like a sneaky serpent. Oh, Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy you. How, how many know, boy, you could be having a good time. Boy, you just, you just enjoying yourself, and all of a sudden, here come a negative person. A toxic person. I mean, man, you, watch this. I got to take my glass. You've been, you, I mean, you're enjoying, you're just having a good time, and here go this person knocking on your door, texting you, calling you. Begging you. <laughs> Begging you. <laughs> Watch this. Let me put this on the mark. Begging you and already owe you. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to understand the devil works through a body. Can I get a witness? Watch this, brothers and sisters. Watch this. Uh, Watch this. You, you, you got to get this thing. Oh, this is good. Though God allows these critical circumstances, it doesn't mean that God lacks the ability to protect us and to provide for us. Often there are hard testings, but after hard testings, don't miss this, comes great triumph. Watch this. Let me flip the coin over. After great triumphs come great testing. Wait, 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 brother and sister, watch this. You remember I told you? First of all, there was moods of delectation. What do delectation mean? I don't know, something delicious. Delectation say delight. It means enjoyment. Secondly, how to keep living when you feel like you want to die is to be on God against the mood of dejection. What do you mean mood of dejection? I mean depression, despondency, despair, lowliness, lowness of spirit. How many know, brothers and sisters, boy, you can be doing good, but all of a sudden, here come worry. I'm going to go back over there when y'all get with me on this. Look at somebody. Tell them, I've been there, boy. All of a sudden, you lost your job. <laughs> your bills do. How many know it looked like you got more month than money? <laughs> your dollar holler, your change is strange. Watch this. How many know that's, that's when worry come? That's when the Jezebel of fear come? Jezebel of panic. Woo. Okay, okay. All right, Elijah. I, uh, 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 Ahab told me, you know, Ahab and uh, Jezebel, let me give you a little historicity. Je- Ahab and Jezebel, the one led uh, Israel into idolatry, worshiping idols. Watch this. Okay. It was wicked. It was no good. It was low down, dirty, low down. Watch this, watch this. So she said, okay, okay. All right, what you did to the prophet, I'm going to put a contract, if you will, on your head. I'm, I'm coming after you, Elijah. I'm, I'm coming to kill you. I'm coming, coming to take your life. Oh, Elijah, look. Elijah said, oh. 
He running. Watch this. Here Elijah has a mood of dejection. Can I preach? Have you ever gotten all excited about something that was to happen? You anticipated it, planned it for it, prepared for it, then experienced it, then it was over, done, passed. The mountaintop of ecstasy had been reached, but now there's a sense of letdown. Listen, brothers and sisters, I will always be in this condition, Pastor Jay. This is the end, Pastor Jay. <laughs> My circumstances <laughs> will never change. I don't have an uncle in the furniture business. As the young people say, it's a wrap. <laughs> Loneliness and weariness and fatigue, feelings of hopelessness can cause moods of dejection. The physical body, let me hurry, can take only so much. Our nerves wear thin. Our resistance gets low. We often irritated. Can I get a witness? And angry. Sometimes physically exhausted, emotionally depleted, mentally drained. My energy is gone. Look at the flight Elijah had taken a full day's journey into the wilderness. It was no small trek. He was tired, lonely, and worn out. How many know life will wear you out? Watch this, watch this, before y'all start pointing the finger. Am I putting y'all to sleep? Listen, listen. Okay. You can listen because you know what's coming. Okay, listen, listen. Watch this. Does not want to face anyone. Everybody, anybody ever felt like that? Does not want to talk to anyone. Anybody ever felt like that? Don't want to go outside. Anybody ever felt like that? Now I know this is going to hit the pew right quick. Don't even want to deal with your responsibilities and obligations. Boy, you so dejected, you so depressed, you so discouraged. Listen, God sent an angel. Clap your hands and say, thank God for angels. <laughs> Boy, what a blessing those who are believers in the body of Christ, Christ that we can call angels. God sent an angel and, and told him to arise. And eat, verses 6, 7, and 8. Let me hurry. It says, it says, and he looked, and behold, there was a cake. God had baked the cake. Ooh. On the coals, on the cruise, a little of water at his head. And he did eat and drink. Watch this. After he got through eating and drinking, he went to sleep again. How many know when you eat, you get sleepy? But watch this. Let me tell you what it is. People try to sleep their problems away. Let me go over here. I'm thinking about it again. People will try to sleep. I got some help over there on the outer. Try to sleep your problem. You say, if I go to sleep, watch this. If I go to sleep, boy, I wake up, it's going to be gone. No, it is not. When you wake up, how many know that problem? Look at somebody. Y'all help me preach. Tell them you can't sleep it away. You better learn how to pray it away. Oh, wait, y'all ain't. Yeah. Don't let my musicians get too far. Watch this. Elijah was a man. That's what James said. He's like us. He struggled. He had struggles like us. He, he, he faced hardships like us. I mean, read it in, in James 5. He, he, he had his human like us, but he knew how to pray. See, that's the problem with so many of us. I'm trying to let this thing go so we can take communion. If you would learn how to pray more, and stop complaining less. Y'all got to help me preach. I, I need you to look at somebody. Tell them you need to stop complaining so much and learn how to pray about it. Well, I guess I've been up here too long. Verse 7 says, and the angel of the Lord came again. The second time. How many know brothers and sisters? Sometimes you call the Lord, look like he's not answering. 
He may not come the first time, but I need somebody to know that if you keep on calling, importunity, be persistent. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. I need somebody to look at somebody and tell them God is an on time God. He'll come a second time. He said, and touched him and said, arise, eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Then Elijah got up and he ate, he ate and he drank. And watch this, it gave him some strength. Strengthen him. Let me say that again, strengthen him. I'm trying, Jones gave him some meat. No, 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 I know y'all listen. Don't y'all try to hurt because when it's time to go, bye, listen. Okay, watch this. Gave him some meat. Don't y'all miss this. Jesus said, my meat and drink is due to the will of my father. Watch this. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to be able to live and not die, you better learn how to eat the meat of God's word. Come on, Sister Dodson. See, let, let me tell you why you need it. Too many on milk. I, I, I got a granddaughter. I, uh, Lady J and I, watch. she said, I'm not, I'm not going to keep giving that baby milk like that. And Tiffany, little we had. I said, I'm telling you, Debbie, right now. Give Sanai some more milk. No, I just, I just gave her some milk. She was just, she was just moving on. She was just moving on. I said, give her some more milk and watch her go to sleep. Soon as she put two more ounces, she went to sleep. Where you going with this? A baby desires the sincere milk of the word. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the reason why so many are giving up in life because you're still on milk. You need to start eating meat. It's going to get rough and tough. You got to learn how to move from milk and start eating the meat of the word. Can I preach? You want to get stronger, you need to eat meat. How many of y'all remember one mama? One mama <laughs> used to take the food and not crush it, she chew it. <laughs> she just step on it like that, Mark. I'm just messing with you. Watch this. She put it in her mouth. She began, I got you, I got you, Mark. <laughs> she began to chew it. Watch this. I'm like, what? Mama chew the food? We used to do that too with Tiffany for Tiffany Lloyd. Chew the food. Take it out of her mouth. It looks so unsanitary. <laughs> she took it out. <laughs> because the baby didn't have no teeth. Put it in the baby's mouth. Don't miss this. Mama took the meat out of her mouth, put it in the baby mouth. Jesus said that, oh, y'all not hearing me. Every man shall live by what? Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of, out of God's mouth. Y'all ain't hearing me here. And if mama can take the meat out of her mouth and give it to the baby, you ought to be able to take the meat of God's word out of his mouth and put it in yours. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light along my pathway. Woo, I feel the anointing. Here it is, 40 days and 40 nights. God told me to tell you I feel the anointing. That 40 represent trial. But don't take your life like Paul told the jailer when the prisoners left. Paul said, don't take your life. He said, what must I do to be saved? Don't take your life. I'm telling you who's streaming live, don't take your life. I'm telling you in person worship, don't take your life. Look, brothers and sisters, you need to understand. You don't have to take your life. I want to let you know, though it is 40 days, which represent trial. Don't look like this thing is ever going to pass. God told me to tell you mm, mm, that he's getting ready to turn your trials in the triumph. Y'all ain't hear me. I feel it. I feel it, sister love. Y'all need to clap your hand. God told me to tell you that he's getting ready to drop your tears. 
God told me to tell you, you ain't going to have to walk the floor all night long worrying about high ends are going to meet. God has given us what we need. And you need to look at somebody and tell them, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You know the journey of life can be long, but look at somebody, tell them, let God feed you. Let God lead you. Let God refresh you. Come on. Let God rejuvenate you. Let God restore you. If God can take care of Elijah's physical, mental, and spiritual need, he can do the same for us. You need to understand that he is, he is a mind regulator. He is a hard fixer. He is a burden bearer. He is a heavy load sharer. Yes, thirdly, let me get out of here. Let if you're going to live and not die, keep on living when you feel like you want to die. Let God show you a marvelous demonstration of his power and presence. I see Elijah hiding in a cave. Elijah was hiding, was hiding, get this, hiding in a cave. There, here it is again. I got to argue with the text. Why are you hiding in a cave when you were standing by the brook of Cherith? God brought you meals on wheels. <laughs> Ravens brought you meat morning and evening rice. Cherith, water came from a rock. Cherith, but then when the brook dried up and the meals on wheels ended, God said, get up. Go down to Zarephath, and there is a crib, I mean a house, a lady there, and when you get there, there's going to be enough food. She's going to sustain you. When he got there, she said, we getting ready to die. Elijah said, fix me a cake first. Don't miss this. Cherith. Here it is, a crib. I got to help somebody out. You got to learn in this life, sometime God will allow our resources to dry up. You've been going here and going there trying to find help. God will allow it to dry up. Why do he allow resources to dry up so you will understand that I am your source? Somebody ought to help me preach. Somebody know when things dry up in your life. God has a way of opening a door <laughs> that no man can close. He can close the door that no man can open. Can I preach in here? Move from Cherith to the widow's crib, then on Mount Carmel. You just won, 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 won a victory. Now here you're hiding in a cave. The Lord told me to tell you I feel the anointing. It's time for the saints to come out of hiding. Look at somebody, tell them, come out of your cave. Why should you come out of your cave? Because my God got something better for you. Do y'all hear me? Listen, brothers and sisters. 
He said, Elijah, where are you? What are you doing here? You got to understand that this question is for the people who are overwhelmed by fear and problems. The same God that blessed you at Cherith, at the widow's crib, gave you victory on Mount Carmel. If you come out of the cave, God is going to show you. But you got to say it before you see it. Do y'all hear me? Listen, God, woo, want to show you a marvelous demonstration of his presence and his power. Listen to what God did. He set him outside the mountain, outside the cave, on top of the mountain. Yes, Elijah was trembling when he should have been trusted. Elijah was in a panic mode when he should have been praising what happened before. I'm going to help somebody. If you're going to make it in your present, remember what God did for you in your past. I, I can't finish this. I, I got to finish this message. Y'all finna shout in the pew. Look at somebody, tell them, I just remember what God did for me in the past. I start praising and thanking him in the present because when I can, couldn't see my way, didn't know how I was going to make it, God kept me even when I didn't have a job. Heal my body when the doctors couldn't do no more. If God did it back then, he can do it right now. Open your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Listen to Elijah now. Said, I've been very zealous. I've been passionate, excited and enthused about you, Lord. The God of hosts for the sons of Israel have forsaken your God. They have turned away from your laws and covenant. They have torn down the altars. Look at it. They have killed the prophets with the sword. And I alone am left. And they come to seek my life and take it away. He was preoccupied with his own situation and predicament. Notice the words. I and my in Elijah's sentences. Look at somebody, tell them God wants you to get your eyes off yourself and put your eyes on him. Get rid of the whys and wherefores and look to the who who sits high and look low and kill dead and make a lie and defend and destroy and open up red seas and bring down walls of Jericho and cause sun to stand still and cause an axe head to flow on the water and air condition a fiery furnace and make the lions lay down like lambs. Keep your eyes on God. Look at somebody. Tell them I will lift my eyes onto the hills. Come on. Come on. Calling you, calling you to look high. Stop looking low. Look at somebody. Tell them, stop looking low. Look high. Because God is sending help right now. Come on, God. 17, 1, 3, 3, John, I send help. He's my refuge and my fortress. Let me hurry up. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we think that we're the only ones standing up for God. 
we think that we're the only ones having this problem. But I want you to know that you're not the only one experiencing troubles and trials and tribulations. You need to understand right here on John, uh, that's somebody worse off than you. And so you ought to thank God for where you are, what you have, and what he's getting ready to do in your life. Come on! Listen, I'm trying to do the doggone thing. God helped Elijah contextualize his own struggle within the framework of others in the same predicament. He said, I got 7,000 prophets who have not bowed a bell, neither have the prophets kissed his feet. You remember I told you about a marvelous demonstration. I'm coming, I'm coming. He showed him, watch this. Woo! He showed him the earthquake. Mm. Showed him the wind. Showed him the fire. Look at somebody, tell him God was not in the wind. He was not in the fire. He was not in the earthquake. Don't you miss this? What God was really doing was trying to get Elijah's attention. And you need to look at somebody and tell them uh, what you're going through today. God is just trying to get your attention. Clap your hands and say, God, thank you for divine interruption. If God never interrupted my life, I wouldn't be here today. If he never interrupted my life, I'll still be drinking. If he never interrupted my life, I'll still be smoking weed. Sit there if you want to. If he never interrupted my life, I would have been dead a long time ago. But I thank you for the earthquake. Thank you for the wind. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for getting my attention. Woo! Yeah, God does not always work, move, and operate in the extraordinary, but God works in the ordinary. He does not always work and move in the spectacular, but he moves in the simple. God does not move always in the miraculous, don't miss this, and the magnificent, but he moves in the minute and miniature. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. God does not always move in the uncommon, but he moves in the common. Listen to what happened. The Lord spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Let me tell you, God is speaking to you, but you missing him, looking for something big. But God is speaking to you in a small, Still voice. God will not holler. God will whisper sometime. Can I get a witness? Anybody heard the Lord speaking? 
to your heart. Come on. Speaking to your conscience. Speaking to your mind. That's not your first mind. That's the small, still voice of God. Clap your hands. Say thank you, God, for your still, small voice. God is speaking, but you are hanging around too much commotion, too much noise, all the loudness. Look at somebody, tell them right now, this week, cut off your cell phone. Don't answer your landline. Don't cut on the television. Let them ring the doorbell. Don't open it up. Stop listening to the news. Shut off your television. Get in a quiet room. Shut yourself in. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? If you want to keep from thinking about dying and suicide, shut yourself in. Let the Lord speak to you. I used to sing a song, Lord, speak to me. But it can't speak to you because you're so cluttered, so clouded with things and people. Clap your hands. Say, this week, I want to hear from God. There is a word. There is a word. There is a word from the Lord. Clap your hands. Say, God, want to speak to you. You might not get all that hoop in the day. Finally, how to keep living when you feel like you want to die is to know that God has a mapped out plan, a mapped out destination. Look at somebody tell them you're not here by accident. You're not here accidental nor oriental but providential. God got his hands on. Y'all ought to be clapping right now. Say, God got his hands on you. Look at somebody tell him, God has mapped out your destination before your mother and father got together, before the texture of your hair, hair before the color of your eyes. He know your DNA. Y'all ain't gonna help me. He was forming you while you were in your mother's room. He had an assignment for you, an appointment for you, a task for you, work for you, job for you, before you were even born. Can I get a window? I hear God woo, telling Elijah, anoint King Haziel, anoint Jehu, anoint your successor, Elijah. In other words, Elijah, I want you to know that I'm commissioning you. God has commissioned you. Clap your hand and say, I'm on a mission. That's why I can't hang out with you. I'm on a mission. That's why I had to leave you alone. I'm on a mission. That's why I'm not going to be bothered about what you think about me. Because I'm on a mission. How you feel about me. Because I'm on a mission. Do I have anybody thanking God that you're on a mission? Remember that God has a plan and purpose for your life. Clap your hands. The reason why you woke up and come the wings of love and didn't die last night because it's not over yet. Y'all ain't clapping your hands. The devil tried to take you out. People wished your untimely demise, but it's not over yet. There's still more 
work to do. Put your arms up in the air, your hands. Look at the person next to you. Tell them how to keep on living. When you feel like you want to die, let me tell you, your destination God already has it. They might set traps and snares, but God gonna help you jump over their snare, jump over their traps, because he got a destiny for you. Clap your hands. Hold on, musicians. Low, low, oh, low, oh, low. Listen. You're getting caught up with your history. Get away from your history and move to your destiny. Look at somebody, tell them, leave your history. Move into your destiny. Let's go, musicians. Look at somebody, tell them, don't take your life. Your service is needed. Don't take your life. Your gifts are an asset. Don't take your life. Your life is important. Don't take your life. Your soul is valuable. Put down that gun. Take that rope from around your neck. Leave those sleeping pills alone. Right now, don't you cut your risk. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it uh, oh, more abundantly, clap your hands, Jesus said, live and not die. I need everybody to stand up that have made up your mind. Say, I got something to live for. Clap your hands. I'm living to see my children graduate. I'm living to see what God got for me tomorrow. I'm living because the best is yet to come. I'm living. Anybody made up your mind that you're going to live? Jesus said live. The one who's a foundation that cannot be broken. The one whose glory will never fade. The one whose light will never dim. The one who has never been up. Hezekiah sundown. Noah's rainbow. Job horse. Pawn in the valley. Jesus. Who went around doing good. Jesus. Born of a virgin. Didn't commit suicide. He said, nevertheless, let your will be done. Jesus. I'm living in Jesus. Clap your hands. I'm finished. I'm living in Jesus. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. He died. But that ain't all. Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands because he lived. Come on, Tiffany, let's go. Come on, Dave. Come on, Keith. Because he lives. Because he lives. Because he lives. Because he lives. I, 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 I can live. I can face tomorrow. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. How? To keep living when you feel like you want to die. The door is open. You can come by letter. K 
candidate for baptism. Jesus came to give you life, those streaming live. More abundantly, more plentiful. There's no time for you to contemplate suicide and think about taking your life. The Bible says, he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son hath not life. The door is open. Listen. You thinking right now, Pastor, I don't see no other way. I'm listening to Streaming Live. I hear you over there with John Ryan, Six Mile. I, I'm about to throw up my, my hands. I, I feel like Marvin Gale throwing up my hands, making me want to holler. Listen. Do yourself no harm. Jesus came to give you life. Listen. So many want to make a living without making a life. Reap this come with rewind. You want to make a living, nothing wrong with making a living, but you better learn how to make a life when the living, the job close. <laughs> Money run out, health fails. People, people leave you, family forsake you. All that might happen, but when you're living the life of Jesus. See, y'all say it's too hard to be a Christian. It's hard when you're trying to live it yourself. Amen. But you let the Lord live. Let the Lord live through you. You're going to make some mistakes. You, you're going to fail. You, you're going to fall. You're going to even sin sometimes. Stop beating yourself up. You ain't perfect. And I am not either. And I don't care who says he ought to be perfect. Well, I'm not. But I tell you one thing I've learned to live my life. I'm, I'm living. See, if you, oh, look at my brother. God bless you. If you cry at the world, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be crying all by yourself. But if you learn how to smile, maybe somebody will smile back with you. Now, I ain't saying you got to be walking around. saying that. But you got to learn how to smile sometimes. Let me tell you what else you got to do. You got to learn how to forgive yourself sometimes. You got to forgive yourself. If you keep from killing yourself, come on, clap your hands and say, I forgive myself. I, you got to learn how to forgive others. You can live. You ain't gonna... Look at somebody tell them, stop crying over spilled milk. I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> That's water under the bridge. Leave it alone. If you're going to bury the dog, bury the tail too and live. God bless you. That's the message. That's the message. And to because God the door is, open. is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power. Never be defeated in the door is open. God. Because God is the greatest power. We shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. And because God, Come on. because God, oh, 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 the door is open. Power. We shall never, we shall never, never be, welcome. be defeated. To the wind of love ministry. Come on.
The devil is a liar. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Devil is. Come on. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never Come on, y'all, sis, Pam. Y'all better Never cross it, y'all. Never be defeated. I said the devil is a liar. Because somebody the tell him, wave the your hands like you just got there. Don't go. Don't tell me. I ain't thinking about you. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. I ain't gonna never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated, say yeah. And because God oh, has the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come on and stand on your feet if you know that you got the victory. Come on and stand on your feet if you know that you got the victory in Jesus' name, that you should never be defeated. That you won't take your own life because you have the victory. You have the power. So come on and give God some praise in this place. 